Welcome to 5 Inch Floppy on GameArena.com.au. I'm Junglist. This week we got the chance to speak to Jeffrey Yohalem, a writer who's worked on the Rainbow Six and Assassin's Creed games, but for the last while has been penning the pages of upcoming jungle thriller Far Cry 3. It's a franchise known for its open world environments, which adds to the ever-present oxymoron that is a linear narrative in the interactive medium. So we asked the storyteller, in a world of discovery, how much should you force story on the player? There's this like mess of genres that, um, and not genres like first person, third person, shooter, uh, action game. Genres like game and experience and like gigantic Lego field like Minecraft or like uh, Skyrim. It's, it's really like the more that we can separate those ideas in players' heads, the more we win because really they're different. Like there's a game like Madden where you are given all the rules at the beginning and it's about winning and losing. And then there's an experience where you're not given the rules and there's no winner or loser and it's a story that you're living. And it's like a ritual that is going to create emotion and move you through it like journey. My feeling is that everyone wants a little of both, and the key is not to mix them. Far Cry 3 is very much an experience in the single player, where you, uh, we, we uh, decided to tackle full on uh, what it would mean to be a real person thrust into this situation. And so you are Jason Brody, who's in his 20s, who's on vacation in Southeast Asia with his friends, and they're all kidnapped by pirates and Jason's trying to survive minute to minute, and he's trying to save the people he loves, and to do that, he has to pick up a gun. And so this is a game about shooting and about killing in a way that no other game has been in the past. In this case, uh, the first kill will mean something, and throughout the course of the game, your character is gonna change because of the killing. So it's really about what a shooter means, and uh, that experience is gonna be like, you know, like Pulp Fiction, or like Alice in Wonderland and like the Blair Witch Project, kind of combination of all those things, and uh, really take you, you know, into psychology. It is a psychological thriller. Otherwise, the the game uh, deals a lot with uh, contemporary issues of social psychology, because in our everyday lives we deal with society and we come into society and it's it's structured so that people who've been there longest get the most. And especially now when people not dying and living really long lives and not retiring, young people are, are reaching a crisis point where they uh, enter the workforce and they're not getting good jobs and they're not uh, able to sustain their lifestyle and they're moving back in with their parents. And it's really frightening. And so we wanted to explore that issue on a nightmare island. And so the game is about many different things, both internal, you know, internal psychology and uh, external, the fight to survive. I'm going to live! <laughs> from what we've seen of the game so far, on your quest to find one of the multiple escapes from these troublesome tropics, you'll come across individuals less than sane. See anything you fancy? Huh. I like the red ones myself. The purples will give you a lift on a gray day. Everything is excellent, really. So how do you write for a crazy person? One of the most important things when you're writing a game is that you have a logic that you never stray from. Um, otherwise, it's just sloppy, and it'll come across as lazy. And that's one of the biggest problems with uh, fantasy writing or science fiction writing, is that if you start inventing things to get you out of situations, then the, pl then the reader or the player or uh, the watcher will go, oh, the, they're cheating. I would say that writing for someone who's insane is like writing for someone who's not insane, and they have to have an internal logic. And every character in this world has a secret story and has uh, arcs that you'll discover. And so when you hear any line in the game, it's there for a reason. Hey, if you're out and about, you could set me up with a couple of cave mushrooms and I would be right as rain. It's easy, actually, to write lines that shock people. I mean, it takes some skill, but not a huge amount of skill. 
The real skill in writing comes from writing lines that have secret meanings beneath them, subtext, and that are part of an overall construction, which is the meaning of the, the plot. Um, if you can do that as a writer, then you operate on um, a level that will keep the player constantly engaged. I mean, the minute the player's hearing lines that are just there for effect, they'll, they'll get over it very quickly. It's like junk food. You know, you'll, you, if you eat too many candy bars at once, you'll get sick very quickly. So the, if you use a line for effect, you have to really quickly move on to something meaningful or it, it'll stop working. That kind of easy shock value writing has plagued gaming for years, mainly because anyone on the team who wanted to have a crack at writing could. Yohalem is a dedicated writer, but he has years of experience working closely with the design teams of Rainbow Six and Assassin's Creed. So what's the key to getting all these elements to come together? Writing exists for games where the gameplay on its own could get repetitive or boring. Um, a game with totally interesting, engaging gameplay all the time is like Geometry Wars 2. That does not need a story because, it, it, think about it this way, it's like if I write a symphony, if I write Beethoven's Ninth, and it's just like, you know, there's the choir, it's going crazy, I don't need a movie to play during that symphony. In fact, if the movie's playing, I'm not listening to music. So uh, that symphony stands on its own, whereas musical scores for films don't. Did you see Bob? Holy shit! I mean, you hear about this in theater all the time, where it's like there'll be an actress or an actor who thinks that they're, uh, like, incredible and keeps upstaging other actors, and that's the term they use. That actor's upstaging me. What that means is that the actor's pulling energy that they don't need to eclipse someone else. And so what happens is then the play is not as good because someone is being pulled from. What's incredible about games is you have, like, six different arts. You have the musical score, you have the art direction, you have the game design, you have the level design, you have the writing, you have um, the sound. And all of those people have to pull back to some degree to allow each other to stand even on a line. There are all kinds of moments where the writing needs to be toned down. You know, the worst thing you can do to a game as a writer is talk when the player is like, let me play. Like, then as a writer, you need to say, you know what, the game, takes precedence and I might have this really like deep thing I want to say but maybe there's a way I can either say it through the level design by working with the level designer and sticking it in or I'm cutting it. Atta boy, you did it. I can hone in on your friend Vince now. Shit, gotta go! It's not that hard though ultimately because in reality the player will like your writing better if you shut up. <laughs> I mean the moment where the what you want is the player to go, God, I wish that speech was longer. That means that you've written well. Our thanks to Jeffrey Yohalem for his time and generosity. We'll see you next week, same time, same place.